Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I wanted to come out and share with you a few things I've been given over the past three or four days that I believe are encouraging and I believe that they are pointing to that time when the church is going to be taken out of here. And uh, the thing is though, what I was shown yesterday in this dream I was given is that that time is preceded by a time of humility on the part of the body of Christ, a time of humbling. All right, so I had this uh, dream yesterday morning. I had woken up and I was just laying there and then finally I fell back asleep. And it was like, it was almost like an experience. It was so real, but my spirit was like in the kitchen. I had just showed up in the kitchen and I was walking around praying and I was talking to the Lord. And then all of a sudden I get this revelation. And it's like I said, well, all I need to do is, and then I said something like complete the walk, finish the race, something like that. I, I can't remember the words I used, but it was simple. And as soon as I said it, I knew I needed my heavenly father's help to do this. So I begin praying and I'm asking the father, help me do this, help me finish this. And as I am praying, all right, my spirit begins to descend to the floor face down. And, and real slowly, real gently, my spirit just goes all the way to the floor until my face is literally on the floor. And as I am prostrate on the floor, I, I hear water. It's like running. I hear running water to the right of me. And then my spirit begins to go into uh, intense prayer. And I am weeping in my spirit. And I am praying and praying for the Father to help me finish whatever this is I needed to finish. The next thing I know, I come to, I am in the garage. I'm still in this dream or this experience. And I am in this vehicle. There's only one vehicle in the garage and it's like an elevated vehicle. It's not the vehicle my husband drives, but it was like I knew it belonged to my husband, okay, which could symbolize the Lord Jesus. And so I am in the passenger seat and I have tears and snot all over my face, even in this dream experience. And so I know I need to get out and I'm gonna go get a paper towel to wipe my face. As I am walking across the garage, it's like this word just uh, drops into my spirit. Where I am at is not as important as where I am going. Where I am at is not as important as where I am going. And as I am thinking about that, I notice that the garage door is wide open. I'm on my way to go back and get in this elevated vehicle and the garage door is wide open. Now, when I wake up from this dream and I'm contemplating the meaning, I feel Holy Spirit impress on my spirit that scripture from James that says, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. And in the context, I felt Holy Spirit impressing on my spirit that this was, with, this was in reference to the rapture, that we as the body of Christ are being called to humble ourselves before the Lord. And then he will lift us up in the rapture. And, and then I remember that door being wide open. And I feel the Holy Spirit remind me of uh, in Revelation 4, 1, the apostle John, he saw the door open to heaven. He said, after these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard like the sound of a trumpet speaking to me, come up here. Now, many people believe this scripture is referring to the time of the rapture when the church will be called up. And I agree with that. I do. I believe that uh, the Lord Jesus is symbolic of the door. And when we see a door wide open, that it can very well indicate that time of the rapture. So I believe that's what the Lord is showing me, that the door is open, church. The door is open and we are about to be lifted up. But the important thing to take from that is that we need to humble ourselves before the Lord. Remember, I, I knew that I needed the Father's help to finish this race, to complete the walk. Whatever it was I was trying to complete, I couldn't do it without him. 
we have to have that mentality, church, that we need him. We have to be looking to him moment by moment, hour by hour, each day, uh, positioned in a place of humility, recognizing that without the Lord Jesus, we can do nothing. As Jesus told us in John 15, 5, he said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He said, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So let's take time, church, to evaluate our position in the Lord. Are we in that place of humility? Are we making ourselves ready so that we can be lifted up? A couple days ago, I did have a dream that I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it, uh, but it was about marrying the, a man, okay, that I didn't know that well. I, uh, it was like a, an arranged marriage, and we had to take time to get to know one another, which speaks to the bride of Christ. When we marry our groom Jesus, we are going to have seven years to get to know one another. And in this dream, though, I specifically took my sandals off and put them in the closet. And I believe that uh, that speaks to our work here being uh, put away for, for now in the closet, in storage. The shoes, the sandals of peace that the Apostle Paul spoke of were actually a part of the armor in Ephesians 6.15. Uh, he said, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So this is our being prepared to share the gospel. Uh, I put those away uh, after I had married this man that uh, I was going to help him raise. He had three children. Okay, so all of this speaks to what we as the Bride of Christ are going to do. We will help the Lord with his work, with his raising his children, all right? And, uh, but for now, like I said, I had put those, those shoes away, the sandals away, and I believe that speaks to the time of our work here being completed. And then just this morning, I had another dream. And in this dream, I was in like a big office complex, which I believe symbolized all the churches Jesus addressed in Revelation. Now, I left the section I was in to go to a different section to pick up something or do something. And as I was heading up the stairs to go to this other section, I'd noticed it was very elaborate. The railing was like made of gold and pearl, and uh, there was lots of glitz and glamour. And what comes to mind is the Church of Laodicea. Okay, so I was up there to get something and there were meetings going on in different offices, but the secretary comes to me and hands me this package of routers. Routers are something used in an office to attach like to an important document to make sure a whole team sees something. But I said, well, where are these going? And she said to Philadelphia. Like she knew I was a part of Team Philadelphia and she was, I was gonna go back and so I could just take these routers with me. All right, all this I believe is pointing to that time when the church, the remnant church, of Philadelphia is going to be taken out and separated away, okay, from the other churches. And this is uh, a promise that Jesus made to the church of Philadelphia that she would escape and um, would not face that hour of testing. In Revelation 3.10, Jesus tells the church of Philadelphia, because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing that hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. All right, so Jesus made that promise to that church of Philadelphia. And the church of Philadelphia kept the word of the Lord, did not deny his name. She was faithful. And this is where we need to be a part of that faithful remnant, that we would be humble before the Lord and making ourselves ready that we would be lifted up when that time comes, church. Now, a lot of people would say that Jesus never spoke of the rapture, and I have to disagree with that. Based on what Jesus said in Luke 21, 36, Jesus said, watch therefore and pray always. Now, I wanna stop there. Jesus, this is Jesus giving a command to the church, watch therefore and pray always. Now, some people think that they don't need to be watching for the Lord Jesus, that that's uh, the watchman's job, the watchwoman's job. But this is to all of us. We are all commissioned to watch and pray always while we're waiting for the Lord. This is a part of our duty, church. And we need to be doing this while we are waiting for him. Watch Therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape. All right, that's 
G1628, it means to flee out, to escape all the things that will come to pass and to stand before the son of man. Now the word stand that's used there is G2476. And one of the uses is to set uh, or place in a balance to weigh. Okay, so this is like a judgment. So we know when the church is raptured, immediately following will be the Bema Seat Judgment when our works are tested by fire. So I believe the Lord definitely spoke of the escape of the time when the church would be taken out. And we need to pray, church, that we are counted worthy. And we need to examine our lives and make sure we're walking in humility before the Lord, making ourselves ready, making sure that we are watching for him, just like he said we should be doing uh, when he returns, okay? If you have time, Paul Begley had Mark Biltz on last Thursday along with Mike from around the world. Now, his interview with Mark was very interesting. Mark was talking about this being the year of the completion of that seven-year Shemitah cycle and a Jubilee year, which is very interesting. So if you decide to watch those interviews, the, the interview with Mark begins around 29 minutes in and the interview with Mike from around the world begins at an hour and 32 minutes in. I will leave a link in the description box uh, if you want to watch those. So again, church, take these things to the Lord in prayer. Ask him for confirmation. But I can tell you firsthand that there are many, many people being shown that we are out of time, uh, that it is time for the church to depart, that our work here is complete. Take time to get alone with the Lord and ask him to show you so that you yourself can hear from him and make yourself ready. As always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.